I'm Dan Quiggle with DQ Design. And in typical YouTube fashion, this is a list of my top 10 mistakes that I've seen throughout my 30 plus years of drafting and management. I served on an advisory board for a drafting and design school, managed well over 150 drafters, developed numerous standards and tools for drafting departments. I've learned over a dozen CAD systems and executed over 10,000 projects. I was trained in the mid 80s for manual drafting and design pencil on paper, ink on mylar, before CAD systems became mainstream. CAD systems were developed in the 60s and more prevalent in the corporate world. They didn't become mainstream until the late 80s when AutoCAD was developed for PCs, which quickly supplanted manual drafting. I was exposed to primitive CAD systems in school, and then my first job was a combination of manual and legacy drawing editing, and anything new is in AutoCAD. Drafting was a job shopping career, we carried briefcases with ink pens, stencils, protractors, and were exposed to a variety of projects, disciplines, and conventions. Drafting schools today focus on technology that leads to endless possibilities of design development tools and conveyance methodology. Therefore, the origination of drafting principle convention gets lost in all the noise of all these never-ending new tools. As CAD systems automate the process, leaving mostly the technical, creative, and analytical aspects of design, the responsibility of assuring adherence to properly documented designs universally, certifiably, and legally from engineering departments to fabricators still remains. So with that intro, let's talk about what I've experienced as the most common top 10 mistakes in CAD and drafting. Number one, sloppy geometry. Every idea starts with a sketch, but when bad geometry makes it into the final product, it'd be hard to catch and have serious consequences. To clarify, bad geometry would be lines that don't touch, are not orthogonal, incorrect tools for the shape, duplicates on the wrong plane, or skewed, unconstrained, unconventional, or random sizes. If the person checking the design is unaware of the hidden flaws and uses them as displayed, it can mislead users to believe form, fit, and function, especially if the geometry is subsequently used by the fabricator. It can also cause file errors, such as unconstrained or unable to convert to other formats. Because CAD's theoretically precise, there's no reason not to draw accurately and round numbers to standard tooling convention whenever possible. Choosing random unconventional sizes can also be costly. This is usually due to training and experience, but sometimes we just miss a step going from the layout to the detail phase. It can be a good idea to start with a clean sheet of paper if this is an issue. It also doesn't hurt to have a second set of eyes to review the geometry in general. Number two, faking dimensions. When dimensions are disassociated from the geometry, sometimes it's easier to edit dimensions rather than change the details. But what if the change affects the assembly, installation, or material selection? Or worse, what if the geometry is used unknowingly somewhere else? When the design drafting phase is over, and the drawings being revised, this is when it's common to edit dimensions without updating the geometry. Disassociating dimensions from the geometry creates unnecessary risk, and most CAD programs have associated dimensioning. Many fabrication and construction methods incorporate CAD geometry into the tooling, and only more so in the future. So whenever CAD files are given to the fabricator versus prints, it becomes imperative to review the geometry first. Number three. Improper views, sections, and details. CAD programs do a good job nowadays of helping set up drawing layouts. However, the problem of view selection and how they're arranged still persists. Before beginning part detailing, it's critical to understand its form, fit, and function. Choosing primary, secondary, and tertiary datums is based on interfacing features, tooling, and repeatable inspection methods. With those in consideration, we choose our primary view and its respective projections, sections, and details. When an engineer passes off a model to a drafter for detailing, it's important to discuss these aspects of the part and make sure that both are on the same page. Sometimes views and sections are flipped or placed incorrectly in relation to their projection. View projections should be presented as if the part was in a bathtub and slid up the side of the tub for each view. And the view should be located on the projected side of the primary view. Number four. Improper dimensioning. Dimensioning can be extremely complicated. Being efficient, thorough, and within proper convention takes time, focus, and dedication. It can be daunting to catch every little detail with complete accuracy. 
not to mention disassociated, out-of-scale, missing, or conflicting dimensions. Unfortunately, geometric tolerancing can be interpreted and implemented in many conflicting ways. GDTP training and certification is available and important to understand when you're detailing a variety of complicated parts. Tabulated, ordinate, basic, weldments, assemblies, the list goes on and on of so many types of detail methods. So training not just the engineers and drafters, but also the fabricators need to be on the same page to ensure information is conveyed effectively into the final product. It's not necessarily the responsibility of the drafter to assume the fabrication methods when detailing parts. Drawings should completely define the final product and allow for competitive bidding on fabrication methods wherever possible to accomplish a best price procurement and allow different companies to meet the requirements however they wish as long as they do. As most fabrication shops are tooled differently and have their own approach. Tolerancing plays a direct role in the cost of the part. It should be loosened within reason wherever possible. So pay attention to the numbers of the decimal places on your dimensions and their associated tolerances in the title block. Number five, scaling. Historically using rulers to measure geometry in reference to the scale noted in the format was extremely important. Whether architectural, mechanical, imperial, or metric, you need to choose between conventional sizes. I found it common for people to use random scales as to whatever fits the border size they prefer based on the amount of dimensioning required. Zooming views in CAD makes it convenient to find scales that fit your needs between border, part, and dimension space. However, the ruler still rules the final print, and the scales are built into the CAD systems for the most part. Another issue is the view section and detail scales that differ from the primary detail on the same or subsequent sheet. It can be confusing to divide the detail scale by the format scale in relation to the primary scale. And again, this is solved in most CAD programs, but it's still a common problem. I created a tool to help with all this by inputting the part size in relation to the requested border size and whether you'll have projected views to the side of the primary view. It then considers room for notes and the density of dimensions resulting in a suggested border scale and whether you should go up or down a border size. Number six, adhering to standards. From CAD to print and everything in between, there are a long list of standards internationally, industry-wide, and on down to organization and department. How your standards have been organized, published, trained, and made available for reference is something that could always use improvement. Checking adherence to all these things for quality control presents a challenge. We all make mistakes, but when these things become endemic, a quality review is in order. Propagating errors can have far-reaching implications depending on your product and industry. Many times we're complacent with what we see on the surface, but it's worth your time to consider the what-ifs of non-conformance. Number seven, notes. Notes do much of the work of a drawing. They tend to be cut and pasted from similar parts, which makes sense, but because they're assumed to be correct from the original drawing, they tend to go unchecked. Some may not be applicable, and some may go missing in the process, and manually typing them in over and over presents variance and spelling issues, and a mistranscribed number can cause costly mistakes. To mitigate these, I recommend tools that host common notes and cut and paste in your drawing based on elicited need for example, I created a questionnaire spreadsheet tool that asks common questions about parts and then automatically generates a note for pasting into your drawing. Number eight, detail versus object. Differentiating between object lines and detailing can be a mess if drafters do not apply conventional use of line weight, line type, and placement of things like dimension lines, center lines, phantom and hidden lines over top of their respective object lines. These standards are spelled out in ASME Y14, and yet CAD systems still overlook many of these. Not only is it graphically aesthetic when applied properly, it makes objects much easier to identify, especially on a complicated drawing. Also, CAD systems have a tendency to use all or nothing when it comes to hidden lines. They should be judiciously applied on critical features only as necessary and never dimensioned to. However, breakout detailing is a whole other artistic license. Number nine, file maintenance. Most corporate settings rely on product lifecycle management software, and coupled with proper training and automated backups, file maintenance issues are a thing of the past. 
However, small businesses may still struggle with effective manual implementation of PLM. And if this is you and you're misplacing files, overwriting revisions, losing backups, etc., I strongly urge you to consider PLM software. Most CAD systems have an integrated native host, and if not, there's many free systems to choose from. It may be cumbersome at first, but it'll pay off in the end. And number 10, consistent revision process. Revisions are a part of every good design process. Unfortunately, they typically come after the design phase is complete. The budget has been spent and the staff are on to the next job. So when a change is needed, it doesn't get the same level of attention the rest of the process did. This is when things get changed without consideration of their systemic impact. Dimensions get disassociated, geometry gets fudged, and the assembly or installation procedures and part markings are forgotten. It can't be understated the importance of taking revision seriously. And if it's a budgeting issue, perhaps this should be built into the job or department from the beginning. I'm sure this list is different for each organization. Questions and feedback are more than welcome, and I hope this has been helpful in some way. Things have changed a lot in this industry and will continue to do so. But in the meantime, thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please like the video and subscribe to my channel.